Hello everyone, and uh, we just hit 3,000 subscribers, so uh, I thought it would be fun to uh, do a F Rome Total War faction tier list. So I know um, a lot of people do these lists, and a lot of people have done it for Rome Total War already. Um, so I thought, you know what, since uh, Rome Total War Remastered has just been announced, um, I'll do one too as a celebration for reaching, uh, for the channel reaching 3,000 subscribers. And thank you to everyone uh, for making that possible. It's really, it's really cool. It's really cool. Um, so in any case, uh, let's get started. Uh, so the first faction on here is uh, Thrace, or I guess I'm going from bottom to top. Uh, this is Thrace. And you know, I like Thrace. Uh, I like Thrace as a faction a lot. I think it has a very cool position, um, you know, like near, uh, above Macedon, uh, above and uh, next to Byzantium. Um, it's in a cool spot. It has some very cool units, like the, um, you know, it has a mix of units. So it has hop, uh, militia hoplites and then um, Falksmen which I really like. They have really high attack and the Bastarne infantry. Uh, the Bastarne, you know, they have a little bit lower defense than a lot of other units, but they have really high attack. And um, they, they're really good, especially uh, if you, like, flank some enemy infantry with them. They are devastating. And the Falksmen as well. And the Bastarne. And they also have access to Phalanx Pikemen. Not, you know... Not the best Phalanx Pikemen in the game, but decent. And then they have just okay cavalry, like really okay. And the general's unit uh, for Thrace, if I remember correctly, is uh, not uh, not great at all. Um, but, I mean, all in all, Thrace is a faction that uh, I I like. Um, I don't think it's one of the best factions uh, due to its somewhat limited roster, but it does get access to some really good offensive infantry, not defensive, but offensive infantry. So I'm going to put Thrace as a solid B. And then straddling the line between B and A. I give it a B plus for being a sort of barbarian and uh, Hellenistic sort of amalgam type faction. I like Thrace. Okay, the next one is uh, Iber uh, the Iberians, or Spain, as it's called in uh, vanilla Rome Total War. And, you know, Spain, it has a pretty good starting position. It's a good, easy start position, um, especially if you're a player that's maybe unfamiliar or whatever. I think for the remaster as well, I think I Iberia or Spain might be a good starting faction if you're unfamiliar with uh, how Rome Total War plays. Because of their starting position, they're kind of safe. Uh, Carthage just has a little presence in, I in the Iberian Peninsula, and you can kind of carve out your own kingdom there as you get, the f get a feel for it. So I think in that sense, it has uh, some value. Um, they have some... So their infantry is not that great um they have some like th their main line infantry is the iberian infantry which is it's it's not bad but it th they're not great they're not great and then they do get better infantry like the uh, scutarii and the scutarii are actually very good because uh the, I, if i'm not mistaken they they're pretty much equal to the Hastati in battle, which is pretty good for a faction like uh, Spain or Iberia. And then they have access to uh, naked fanatics uh, going from their Celtiberian sort of influence, the Celtic influence. Um, again, a good offensive unit. Uh, and then they have the bull warriors that are really good. Um, but of course, they're quite expensive. Um, and then in terms of cavalry... Uh, they actually have pretty good cavalry. Uh, pretty good, like, medium cavalry, I want to say. But uh, ev everything's kind of middle in the road. The start position is kind of easy for the start, like for a beginner player. I, you know, 
I'm going to have to give them a B because they're very much in the middle uh, in terms of everything. I don't think their roster is weak. Uh, their roster is not the best, but it's not weak. And then their starting position is pretty good. And not the most interesting, but pretty good. So you know what? I give it a B. Uh, and then you have the Seleucid Empire. So the Seleucid Empire, um, of course, in Rome Total War, it's kind of like a rump state compared to what it actually should be uh, because the map cuts off a bit too soon because the Seleucids, of course, owned a ton of territory to the east of the Rome Total War vanilla map, which stops abrupt abruptly in the middle of the Caspian. Um... And, uh, you know, the Seleucid roster is very, very flexible. Like, you've got access to everything. You've got access to extremely strong uh, phalanx pikemen. You've got the Argyra spids, the silver shield pikemen. Um, and then you've got the uh, legionary type unit, and their legionaries are very good. Um, the, the, uh, the Silver Shield Legionary, the Seleucid Legionaries are very good. Um, and then of course, in terms of cavalry, they get access to cataphracts, scythed, uh, chariots. So basically the, the best units of like Parthia, Armenia, and Pontus. Um, then they get access to elephants and then armored war elephants. The Seleucid roster is just insane if you think about it. So you know what? I, because of the flexibility of everything the Seleucids can put out there in vanilla, I'm going to give the Seleucids um, a tier. Like, the only thing for me is that the Seleucids starting position, for me, they start out, they, they, they have kind of a big start position, right, for Rome Total War. Like, for example, other factions like, I don't know, um... Who am I thinking of? Parthia. Starts out with two regions. Uh, Pontus, two regions. Um, Armenia, two regions. And, you know, I always like starting out small. So for me personally, it's the Seleucid start position that made me not as interested in playing as them. So I'm going to have to put them in A because even though they have an excellent unit roster, um, I'm just not a huge fan of their start position. So that's why they go under A. Um, and then we have, of course, uh, Scythia. And uh, Scythia is, you know, I really like nomadic factions. And uh, they, they just play in a unique way. And, of course, here's the thing. Uh, they're overpowered in Rome Total War due to the power of horse archers. Horse archers are just insane, right? And the uh, Scythian horse archers are, uh, you know, pretty good, pretty similar to the other um, horse archers in the game. But then you also have the uh, the women horse archers, the noble women horse archers. And then you have the Scythian noble horse archers, which are pretty awesome. They have really high missile attack. And then you have um, uh, Scythian nobles and the barbarian warlord. And these are good, like, medium cavalry, right? So, um, you know, I, I think the Scythian roster, it's not, it's not the best. Definitely, definitely not the best. And, you know, if, when you think about the depiction of nomads, like the Sarmatians or the Saka in, uh, mods like Europa Barbarorum, where, you know, they can kind of settle down and get access to, uh, local infantry units, that's not the case in vanilla Rome Total War. Uh, and because their infantry is so weak and it stays weak the whole time, like they just get some axemen and then peasants, right? I'm going to have to give Scythia... It's very one note. So you know what? I give Scythia a D just for their depiction in Rome Total War. Rome Total War Vanilla doesn't do no a nomadic faction justice in the way the faction develops. And, um, yeah, it's just not great. Not great. They could have done a much better job. Um, and, you know, in Rome 2, they did a little bit of a better job. I would give them a C. 
uh, for the nomadic factions included in um, Rome II that are the equivalent of Scythia here. Um, but I think CA could have done better with Scythia. So now we have the Scipii. And, uh, you know, the Scipii are my second favorite of the Roman factions uh, because I like the start position. It's a tougher start position. Uh, you, uh, Of course, you have three Roman factions, right, that are playable in the original Rome Total War. You got the family system, so they're separate factions. I mean, everyone who watches this channel, I'm sure, knows, or most people. Um, so the Scipii... I really like their start position. It's, I, I'd say, the, the um, one of the tougher ones uh, for a Roman faction. So you know what? I'm going to give the Scipii a B. Because um, I, uh, I, I also don't like the blue color for the Romans. It makes me think of the L.A. Dodgers. And um, as a Giants fan, that's not the kind of blue I like. So I'm going to put them under B, because I like the start position, don't like the color, don't... Uh, and, of course, the Roman unit roster is not my favorite. Um, very infantry-focused uh, until you get better cavalry near the end, post-reform. Um, yeah, I'm going with a B. Julii, I like the color. I don't like the start position, because they start off in the north of Italia, and they just fight Gauls like the whole time, and then Germans, and then Iberians. Very similar kind of barbarian armies. Um, but I like the red color. Like, that's the color I feel like the Romans should be, at least when I think of Romans, right? Uh, so I find their color aesthetically pleasing um, to play as and to fight as. Um, so you know what? I give the Julii a B. I don't like the start position. I don't like the way the campaign develops. Uh, it's kind of one note to me. Um, so I give them a B. I give them a B. And then the Brutii, uh, you know, because the Brutii, they, they face down a very diverse assortment of enemies. So they go after the Greek cities in Macedon and, um, and then Thrace and then Dacia, and um, Pontus. I'm going to give the Brutii... You know what? I give the Brutii an S. You know why? Because uh, the Brutii, they, this is kind of the quintessential Roman experience in the original Rome Total War. You face off against barbarians like Thrace and Dacia. You face off against er, the people commonly associated with the term barbarians anyway. Um, and then you face off against Hellenistic kingdoms, uh, the Greek cities, and then Pontus. Um, I like the Brutii. It's the quintessential Roman experience. It's the favorite, it's my favorite Roman campaign from the original Rome Total War, so I'm going with Brutii S tier. Then we come to Pontus. Of course, Pontus is one of my personal favorite factions of all time. I really like the start position. Um, of course, you know, none of these start positions are the most historical. Um, so, of course, I'm, I'm trying not to be a stickler here. Um, so, you know, Pontus, uh, the only issue with Pontus is that um, its roster is a little bit weaker, a little bit less flexible than um, the Seleucids and Armenia, comparatively. It's more flexible than Parthia, um, because they do have access to Cappadocian Cav, which is very good cataphract cavalry, and then, this, and then the chariots, very powerful Pontic chariots. Um, their general is just okay, kind of middling. Um, and then they have kind of a flexible array of infantry, but not the best, because they just get, you know, the bronze shield pikemen. They don't get the silver shields like the Seleucids. So you know what, due to the... They have a flexible roster, but they're not the best at anything. So I'm going to give them an A. Really like Pontus. They're one of my favorite factions of all time. Uh, but in the in vanilla Rome Total War, 
their fa- their roster is it just lacks that killer unit. I guess the Cappadocian calf would be it, but um, they're just a little outclassed by a few other factions. Um, <clears throat> so now we get to Parthia, and you know I really hate. You know, the the pink Parthia, the pink pajama people, that's a whole meme thing. And But to be perfectly honest and serious, like that color, like it hurts your eyes, man. I don't like that color. Um, in the remaster, it, it doesn't look, the color doesn't quite bother me as much. It seems like it's muted just slightly. <clears throat> so it doesn't um, hurt. To look at as much, uh, personally, but of course, uh, the Parthian start position. You know, I've been avoiding talking about start positions this whole time because everyone knows the Rome Total War regular start positions uh, are horribly historically inaccurate and just strange. And you know, as a historian, they bother me a lot. Parthia's bothers me the most because, of course, um their start position is not even, like, included on the map, right? So they should be east of the Caspian, but the map stops in the middle of the Caspian. So they're located in, like, northern Iran, and then they also have a camp north of the Caspian, and it's just kind of weird, and they're kind of divided from each other. I don't like that at all. I don't like the color. Like, it's funny, but then when you actually want to play as them, it bothers me. But they have some of the best... Their saving grace is, of course, they have access to the best... Some of the best cavalry in the game, the cataphracts. Uh, they have a great general. Uh, they have Persian cavalry, which is a great horse archer unit. Um, and they have... Uh, um, access to war elephants as well, not... Like, the Seleucids have uh, armored war elephants, but, you know, they get war elephants. So their saving grace is their awesome cavalry roster, so I give them a C. Just slightly better than Scythia. Then you have Numidia. And uh, Numidia always bothered me in um, Vanilla Rome Total War. I don't like their faction symbol uh, because... I just don't like this faction symbol. I think the faction symbol for Numidia has done a lot better in mods and in um, uh, Rome 2 as well. I just don't like this faction symbol. There's something I don't like about it. I don't like the color. It's a very boring kind of color to me. I think they could have found a better color there, especially since Rome Total War is such a colorful game and the colors are nice and oversaturated. I don't like this color. Um, now the Numidian roster, or the Numidian start position is horrible, and then they start off with Siwa, like right next to Egypt, which doesn't even make any sense, and it always bothered me severely. So, negative points for the start position and the color and all that. In terms of the unit roster, um, they do get... Numidian legionaries, which are okay. They're okay. Uh, not nearly as good as um, other copy legionaries, like the... I think the Armenian ones are slightly better, and the Seleucid ones are better than that. So, uh, yeah, they're not great, but they're okay. Uh, they get access to some decent medium cavalry. Um, but... You know, not great, not the best, not the heaviest, not the best skirmisher cav either, just good. Good. Um, so their roster is decently flexible. Start position is horrible, color is horrible. I don't like the faction symbol. Um, Numidia could have been done a lot more justice. I have to give him a C. I have to give him a C. Uh, C minus. C minus. Now we come to Macedon. Macedon, of course, has a very nice roster. It was not playable in the original Rome Total War, which struck me as odd. Um, 
But in any case, they have a nice, flexible roster. They have very good pikemen. It's not the most flexible roster since they don't have good uh, sword infantry, swordsmen. Um, but they do have a good number of uh, cavalry as well. Macedonian cavalry and uh, the companion cavalry are pretty good. Um, they're, they're like light, heavy cavalry, heavy, medium cavalry. Um, decent, uh, and I like their start position. They're right in the middle of the action, in the middle of Thrace, in the Greek cities. And then Rome is right nearby. Um, so, you know, a Macedon, I give it a B. It's, everything is decent. G good start position, good unit roster, not the best. Decent, it should have been playable. Good start position, nice dynamic campaign. Yeah, Macedon is a B for me. Now we come to the Greek cities. So the Greek cities, um, I, I always question their choice of the cities to include in the Greek cities faction. I think Syracuse is in there and then Pergamum as well, which I don't understand. Um, so I'm not a big fan of the start position for the Greek cities, like other mods like EB that give uh, the Greek cities um, Athens, Sparta, and uh, Rhodes. That makes more sense to me gameplay-wise um, and, of course, history-wise. Um, so, yeah, that's got that working against it. But uh, they have very cool infantry. I like that they have uh, hoplites and then armored hoplites and Spartan hoplites. I like hoplites. I like them better than the phalanx infantry. Uh, just personally, I, f I like the more classic hoplite warfare style. Um, and uh, their cavalry, not great. Not great. Um, they, they do get access to like heavy peltists, which is kind of cool. Um, and they get access to good... Um, siege equipment as well so you know what i really like the greeks personally i always like playing as them uh in every mod i try um i like uh playing as greeks like fighting against imperialist powers all the time but their unit roster is just a little bit limited, and I don't like the start position they have in Vanilla Rome Total War, so I have to give him a B. Very up and down with this faction. So now we come to uh, Germania. And, um, you know, they have a pretty decent assortment of offensive infantry. They've got the Naked Fanatics, they've got some Axemen, they got the Night Raiders... Uh, they got the Chosen Axemen, which are pretty good. And then their cavalry, um, just average. Average. Um, the Their Gothic cavalry is really good, but their other cavalry is really average. Uh, but, you know, the Gothic cavalry is, like, pretty good. It's, um, you know, the defense is a little lower than something like, I don't know, the Cappadocian Cav. But then the offense, uh, their attack stat is higher. Right? At uh, 13, I think. Uh, so, you know what? And then the start position, you know, it's always kind of fun to kind of swoop down and invade the Mediterranean from the north. Um, and then they have chosen archers, too. Really good foot archers. So, you know what? They're actually... You know what? I don't... I'm going to have to give them a B. I give Germania a B. Because, um, you know what? I give it an A. Their roster is really good. Their roster is better than I remember. And for that reason, I give Germania an A in Vanilla Rome Total War. So that's uh, probably the first unexpected score for me. Um, I That roster is pretty good. So, now we come to Gaul. So, Gaul... Like Germania has a good um, assortment of um, infantry. So they've got, uh, again, naked fanatics. Um, 
the I think slightly no they're the same as there's whatever yeah they get the naked fanatics and then they have swordsmen and then chosen swordsmen I like I like it when a faction has good swords good swordsmen and they're not Roman um though I feel like the Ger the Germanic infantry is better overall um and then the Gauls have weaker cavalry a less diverse assortment of cavalry um and uh otherwise Gaul is pretty underwhelming in terms of its unit roster I like the start position because you end up fighting with the Romans right away and the Iberians and you have Germania nearby and the Britons so I like the start position the unit roster is a little weak uh, but then they also have the Forester Warband Archers. Those guys are nasty. Extremely high missile attack. Really unexpected. So I have to give Gaul. I give Gaul an A. I like Gaul. Um, again, not the most historical depiction of Gaul. Uh, I don't, you know, everyone knows I'm not a huge fan of Amalgam factions. But I actually like Gaul. Um, and I like their color. So, you know what? I like Gaul. I like Gaul. Um, now we come to this. I don't like the Bronze Age Egyptians in Rome Total War Vanilla. I'm sorry. I just, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. If there was a tier lower than the Scythians, I would put him there. Can I add one? No. Uh, whatever. I don't like Bronze Age Egypt in um, Vanilla Rome Total War. You know, even if they started with the Bronze Age units, it would have been cool if they, like, reformed and became more of, like, a Diadochi kingdom as the campaign went along, but no, none of that development. I just don't like it. It's always fun to conquer Egypt because I don't like having Bronze Age Egypt in my vanilla Rome Total War campaign. So yeah. But the unit roster, it's okay. But it doesn't matter. I don't I can't stand Bronze Age Egypt in Rome Total War. I want a Bronze Age Egypt in a Bronze Age Total War. Uh so CA. Bronze Age Egypt belongs in Bronze Age Total War. I want to see it. With a rise of Sargon of Akkad um free DLC campaign. That's what I want, okay? All right. So, um, and of course, remember everyone, this is just my opinion. I'm not being super serious. This is just a celebration video for 3,000 subscribers, which I still can't believe. Thanks again to everyone. So let's uh, go to the next faction, uh, Daisha. So Daisha, you know, they have... Um, Again, similar, uh, they're kind of similar to Thrace for me. So they have access to a similar assortment of uh, infantry. Uh, they've got the Dacian Falksmen, and then the they've got Chosen Swordsmen, and then more Naked Fanatics, of course. Um, so they've got a decent assortment of offensive infantry. And then the Chosen Swordsmen are really good elite infantry. And then, um, in terms of cavalry, they, they do get access to, like, Scythian mercenary ca horse archers, which is cool. Um, but then they, they only have the Barbarian Noble Cav as, like, a good medium cavalry unit. So da the Dacian roster is not quite as flexible as Thrace. Uh, the start position is not quite as interesting to me as Thrace's is. Um, so, you know, I think they could have done a little bit better with this faction. But because I feel like the unit roster is, you know what, it's just like a more limited Thrace. But in place of the uh, Phalanx Pikemen for Thrace, um, Daisha gets those Chosen Swordsmen, which are pretty good, actually. And they do have Falksmen. And I really like Falksman as an offensive infantry unit. So um, I'm going to give Daisha... 
a C plus. They could have done a little bit better with them, but um, C plus B minus for Dacia. Okay, Carthage. Now Carthage uh, was one of the first factions I played in Vanilla Rome Total War when it uh, released. And um, I liked Carthage in the original Rome Total War. I feel like in Rome 2, they were not that interesting to play as, unfortunately. But in Rome 1, I feel like Carthage was very cool because they have kind of a... Um, yeah, like, you know, I mentioned with the Seleucids that I don't like the start position. That's why I don't like playing as the Seleucids. I don't like starting as a big faction. But Carthage, it's not that big, and it's kind of far-flung. So it's a very diverse um, sort of thing, even though you're not that large at the start. And then you, uh, you have the ability, you, you're fighting very diverse enemies. So you're fighting uh, Greeks and Romans and um, Numidians and Iberians and Gauls. So that aspect I really like about Carthage. And then Carthage has access to a very cool assortment of units. So you've got Iberian infantry and then Libyan spearmen, and then the Poeni infantry, the kind of Libby Phoenician infantry, and then the Sacred Band, um, and then they have access to really nice cavalry. Not the best cavalry in the game, but pretty damn, uh, pretty darn good, right? Um, and then they get war elephants, nice war elephants too. So I really like Carthage. I think Carthage is one of the key st keystone experiences in Vanilla Rome Total War. So I give it an S. Um, I think it's one of the best experiences Vanilla Rome Total War has to offer. And then you come to the Britons. Um, Britannia. Now, um, I'm not a huge fan of the Britannia faction because as a historian, it's just... Uh, I don't know. Just having Britannia like run rampant all over Europe with uh, their awesome uh, Britain chariots, which they have. They have very nice chariots. Um, it's a unique faction, right? So, okay. The unit roster is very cool. It's very unique. They've got the Woad Warriors, which I really like. They've got the Chosen Swordsman again. Um, they've got nice swordsmen. They've got cool chariots. Um, they've got a chariot general. Um, and then the chariot general is nasty too. Um, really cool unit roster. Um, not a huge fan of this faction running rampant all the time <laughs> against everyone with chariots. Um, but that's kind of a problem with the unit balance in Vanilla Rome Total War. I give them a B. It's kind of up and down for me. Um, okay, and then you come to Armenia. So Armenia is an S, of course. And why is that? Well, because they've got a very diverse assortment uh, of units. They've got a very flexible unit roster. So Armenia uh, is more flexible than Pontus. And it has a better start position. So you're next to Pontus, you're next to, uh, you're near Scythia, you're near Parthia, and you're near the Seleucids. So from the very start, you have a very dynamic campaign, right? And then um, as the campaign goes on, so it's very um, tense from the very beginning. And you have to be very aggressive with how you use horse archers, right? Because horse archers are quite overpowered in vanilla Rome Total War, so you got access to the horse archers so that you can skirmish with the bigger, slower armies of the Seleucids, right? And you can counter um, the quick horse archer Parthian armies, right, with those units. But then, as the campaign goes on, you get access to the heavy, the Armenian heavy spearmen, which is a unique unit. And the heavy spearmen are basically like awesome uh, phalanx pike units. And they're really good. They're not the best pikemen in the game, but they're really good. And then you get access to um, 
legionary infantry, the Armenian legionary infantry, really great unit. Uh, not the best legionary, not as good as the Seleucid one, uh, somewhat comparable to the Numidian one. I think it's a great unit. So then you have a very good kind of um, legionary style infantry unit that's faster and uh, more maneuverable than the heavy spearmen. And then you keep the heavy spearmen um, for your anti-cav needs, right? And of course, you have access to Eastern Infantry, which is the best unit in the game, of course. Um, and then the cavalry is some of the best cavalry in the game. They're probably the, the chariot archers might be the best cavalry unit in the game because they have, you combine the overpowered nature of horse archers with the incredible defense of um, the cataphracts. So the cataphract archers are awesome. One, the be one of the best units in the game. Um, and I believe Armenia is the only one that has access to cataphract archers. And then you have regular cataphracts. And then you get the awesome Eastern General cataphract with two hit points. Um, so yeah, you got an awesome start position. An awesome, uh, very... It's a very dynamic start position, fighting immediately with whoever you want, a very diverse assortment of enemies. And then you've got a very diverse assortment, a very flexible unit roster. Um, it's just a very fun campaign. It's a quintessential vanilla Rome Total War experience. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much my Rome Total War faction tier list. Um, so again, I want to thank everyone very much, uh, all my subscribers and members and, uh, supporters for helping me reach 3,000 subscribers. It's, it's been a fun ride these past uh, eight or nine months. Um, ever since my first video, the retrospective review of Empire Total War. Um, and of course I ended up just, you know, just out of habit. I just, um ended up making mostly videos about Rome Total War and then some about Medieval 2 as well, with just, you know, a spattering of um, mod more modern Total War videos, like um, some videos on Rome 2 and Attila and uh, Shogun as well. But of course, um, most of my videos have been about Rome and Rome's mods and the classic mods that a lot of people have forgotten uh, or had forgotten until the remaster was announced. And, you know, I feel like um, this remaster has kind of rekindled the original Rome Total War community, and I think that's really cool, because that was a really fun time in Total War history, and with all those interesting mods, unique mods, Europa Barbarorum, Rome Total Realism, Roma Serectum, uh, end of days to chivalry, all of those rivalries. Uh, it was a fun time. It was a dynamic time. And I hope that with the remaster, that community can be rekindled and uh, we can do it together. Uh, so in any case, thank you all for helping me reach 3,000 subscribers. And um, yeah, let's see how fast... Uh, can we make it to 4,000? Can we make it to 4,000 before the release of the remaster? I don't know. So I'll try to come up with some cool content for everyone. Uh, this is going to be a Rome Total War focused month, that's for sure, because I had no idea the remaster was coming. I had an inkling based on the, um, the fact that they hadn't put it on sale and the fact that they pulled it from Steam a few days before the um, announcement of the remaster. Uh, but it, uh, I was blindsided by it. I didn't know they were going to do it now, right? I had no idea about the scheduling. So yeah, this is going to be a Rome Total War month, that's for sure. I'm going to talk about more classic mods. I'm planning on talking a lot about mods like Fourth Age Total War, which I think, again, personally, my favorite Lord of the Rings mod for Total War. Uh, I want to talk about Fourth Age. I'm going to talk more about some other mods that I haven't uh, yet covered on the channel, including Ran no Jedi, the Shogun Total War mod for Rome Total War. I'm going to talk me, uh, about uh, Rome Medieval, um, which is the other medieval mod for Rome Total War, besides Chivalry. 
Um, and uh, perhaps I'll talk about Roma Serectum as well, which I haven't yet had a chance to do on the channel. So, uh, yeah, thank you everyone again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.